Hey, what's up? Dave with the Presence Valley Barbell. So as most of you are probably aware, I tore my adductor in training two weeks ago, and I wanted to address what happened, what I'm doing now, and where really my training is at, and the mental side of training that has me prepared for a situation like this, even though hopefully it never happens to anybody and I really wouldn't have expected it to happen to myself. So first of all, one of the, the things that people are maybe criticizing isn't the right word, but addressing in my last video about pivots or um, the, just the, the difference between pivot and deload weeks. And a lot of people challenged me on whether it was actually a good recommendation to continue to, to do things like this when I got hurt doing it. Now, I, I think the, the main point with that, I, I get where people are coming from, but what happened to me, I think was a pretty unique situation. So what happened was I was doing split squats, the safety bar split squats that were pictured in the last video, but I was on my last set of those and I got down, I was doing a set of 10, it was maybe my fifth rep on that set, and I had 350 pounds on the bar for single leg squats. Uh, I, I was doing the fifth rep, got to the bottom, and felt two pretty large pops. I, I feel like I heard them, but who knows. Um, it, it was pop, pop, and I just collapsed. So 350 pounds, dump it over my head, and I end up basically on the fetal position on the floor and immediately knew that I had suffered a pretty significant injury. So I laid there for about 20 minutes, maybe not that long, 10 minutes or so, uh, people kind of coming around and wanting to, to look at it, wanting to see how bad it was, but, but I, I knew in the moment how it felt and, and really how I was feeling right then that, that I definitely had torn my adductor. So, I was afraid to look at my leg. I was afraid to see you know, a, a total detachment of the muscle and have it pulled up into my groin or something like that. Um, so I laid there, kind of composed myself, gave myself a little bit to, to get myself in the frame of mind to, to move forward. And, and I'm gonna dive deeper into this aspect, uh, but I, I'm giving it a little bit of the play-by-play -play in the moment. But the, the mental side of things is going to be really the major point of this. So. Um, once I, I found the courage, I rolled up my pant leg, started pressing around, doing a little bit of movement, and there, there didn't seem to be any physical deformation that I could see. There happened to be a medical doctor there uh, on just, he was working out nearby, came and gave me a quick examination. Nothing that he could see that was, was anything to, to worry about in the moment, but obviously signs and symptoms and, and just the way that it presented uh, certainly had a torn adductor. So, after that, the, the, the swelling basically that evening started to present itself uh, really basically right at my lower abdominal muscles. And uh, then over the next two days got pretty significant, uh, well, very, very significant de decoloration down my leg and all up around basically the just below my, my waistline. So there's only a little bit of decoloration, discoloration left right around my knee. That's all that's left at this point. The rest of it is pretty much gone. Uh, and I think that kind of goes along with where I'm at physically with the recovery. So as far as addressing why this happened to me, I had just come off what was some of the absolute best training of my life. I, I had squatted 700 pounds. My previous best in the gym was 660. So my squat went up uh, 40 pounds, probably more than that. 660 every time I had done it was basically a near limit lift. And um, squatted 700, you know, eight and a half, nine RPE. So um, it got significantly stronger on, on really all of my movements. The last time I had done the safety bar split squats would have been seven weeks prior. And I used 250 pounds for what felt like a similar RPE. So this was my second week of progressions of the split squats. And I, I really was just too aggressive. So as most people know, powerlifting really has, has extremely limited unilateral demands. And I had gotten very, very strong bilaterally and, and really maybe a product of, of the way that I train both my lifts just with the wider stance squats and the, and the sumo deadlifts. Doing the single leg exercise, even though I was obviously physically capable uh, from, a, from a strength you know, capacity standpoint, it was, it was something that was probably outside my limit from a, from a movement standard standpoint. And not necessarily movement standard, but movement standard under that amount of weight. So um, I, there was no warning signs, no nothing, went down, felt the pops, hit the floor. So 
I still don't think that this is something that people will generally have any reason to be concerned about. I, I don't think that most people will put 100 pounds on their, their safety bar split squat. Um, I, I don't think most people will be doing 350 pounds on exercise in the first place. But I do think that there is some word of caution here, um, being that any time that, that you know, you're doing any sort of dynamic exercise that that's outside of your, your normal training abilities or just normal uh, abilities in general, that it's something that you just need to exercise more caution with. So um, I, there's, there's no regrets. I don't think that I, I did anything wrong, obviously. Um, but you know, it's one of those things that um, my, my physical capabilities exceeded just the, the movement abilities in that, in that single stand, standpoint. So uh, I don't think it's something that people need to be concerned about. And, and really, it's, uh, I would, I'm excited to get back to that movement too and, and hopefully progress it and, and obviously work on something that, that could be a, a um, deficiency for me. So anyway, um, where I'm at now is, is surprisingly... Um, positive surprise like I'm two weeks post injury it, it happened on a Thursday I'm filming this video on a Sunday but you know all the training happened over the period of, a, of that you know last two weeks so as of the Monday which would have been 10 days uh, before 10 days after the injury I was still extremely uncomfortable squatting so you can see in a lot of these videos I still have pretty significant hip shifting uh, you know, my left hip is not wanting to sit evenly with my right hip. I'm struggling to hit depth. Uh, but th this was still a very, very good day, a very positive improvement over over even stuff that was happening the week before. The, the week before I was struggling with any amount of mobility, even doing even doing half squats was was giving me significant discomfort. So through the period of last week, I, I got a lot more uh, mobility. And most of that came from just a number of things is that as soon as I hit the floor and composed myself, I, I didn't dwell in the, in the fact that um, you know, I was significantly injured and it was going to take uh, a good deal of work to move past it. I got up off the floor and I immediately started walking around the gym. So I walked around the gym for probably 20, 30 minutes and then I finished the rest of my workout. I had some lat pull downs and some overhead press and I finished those. I came back to the gym the next day and I did what I could. I did some chest supported rows. I did just some light movement and I just kept myself moving. And, and every time I was moving, it was significantly just uncomfortable. Like there was, there was major, major issues in my movement. So uh, I got this guy here that kept me, kept me active every morning. I got up and took him on a walk. So I'd, I'd uh, walk twice a day for about half an hour around my neighborhood. And this was, you know, the day after my injury. So past that, I'm also very, very lucky to have a lot of really good resources around me. So the main person I need to thank here is a guy named Phil Scruggs, who is a, a PhD in exercise physiology. I may, I may have that wrong, but um, has his main job at this point is working with strength training and rehabilitation for some Olympic sprinters. So he works out of my gym, trains people out of my gym, and immediately took point on, on helping me with my injury. So a lot of the things that I'm showing here are things that Phil gave me. Phil has been hands-on through this entire process, and, and really it's just low-level strengthening of the adductor. I, I'm sure he would have a much, much more complicated in-depth explanation, but I don't really think that that's something that I'm, I'm totally comfortable going into. It's a little outside of uh, you know, my, my realm of expertise here, but uh, you know, the physical therapy side of things was very aggressive as soon as possible with uh, you know, you can see in these videos, there's significant discomfort, you know, there's movement deficiency, all of that. But I was doing these exercises two, sometimes three times a day and adding on as much movement as I could. So um, every, every day I was testing my limits, trying to see, can I do some single leg stuff? Can I, can I do, you know, some body weight, front foot elevated split squats and everything I could do. I was just trying to progress those things every single day. So um, starting on Monday, I was able to do some partial squatting and Tuesday, I was able to start deadlifting. So with those deadlifts on Tuesday, I was still having a, a pretty good amount of uh, movement deficiency. I, I was expecting to only go in and, and just do maybe one plate off of blocks, but I started off with 10 kilos on each side for the deadlifts and really had no issues at all with that movement, took that one to the floor, started feeling better, and ended up progressing myself up to, I think it was 90 kilos for some, some tempo pause reps 
And again, just every day started seeing significant improvement. So uh, this wasn't even two weeks post-injury. So Thursday, I was, I was filming stuff with SBD on Thursday, so I actually don't even have any footage of that day. But I, I was able to start doing barbell back squats full depth. I worked up to 185 pounds for three or four sets of five with a pause and a tempo. Um, but compared to Monday, when I couldn't even get to depth, I was able to hit depth pain-free, uh, maybe, maybe feeling like my adductor was working uh, a little bit at that point, but, but really no, no signs that it, there was anything wrong in that moment or that I was doing too much is maybe a better way to say it. So the following day, Friday, uh, went in, I was going to try deadlifts again, and I, I didn't have a number that I wanted. I was just going to start doing some triples. And so I started with one plate, put on a 25, put on another plate, and just kept working up through triples until I ended up doing two triples with 495 and nothing, there was, there were no signs at all of any discomfort of, of, of me pushing beyond my capabilities of the, the, you know, the limitations of the tissue at that point. And so at this point I'm, I'm two weeks post-injury and really feeling like, you know, this, this coming week will be again, some modified training, but you know, I, I could, I could end up four weeks post-injury and and be 100% back to you know full training capacity and, and I, I think that's that's an amazing thing that that you know I've gotten to where I am and, and it's not like um, I've done this on my own I, I've had some amazing resources but I think the thing that's most important is the mindset that I had from the get go and it didn't happen in those 20 minutes that I spent laying on the floor. In the, in the 20 minutes that I, I spent laying on the floor, that was composure, there was some frustration there. I had just come off the best training block of my life, looking to do something you know, hopefully amazing going into Raw Nationals and put up a, a really good total and compete for first place. But in the moment, you know, I, I knew that those things had, had essentially been taken away from me, but that the whole process of training does not happen on a small level like that. So even though I was very excited about my possibilities at this coming Raw Nationals, this is not my last meet. I, I've said this a number of times. Anytime I'm frustrated after a meet, I, I don't ever feel like it's the end of the world. And, and in this case, had in the moment what I felt like was a very significant injury was, was potentially gonna take me out of Raw Nationals, but I never even let that creep into my head. I never said, well, I'm out of Raw Nationals. I said, okay, I might not win, but this is now what's in front of me. So. The only thing that was going to get me better and get me better in time for all nationals and get me ready for next year and all the goals that I have was to focus what, on what was immediately ahead of me. So instead of sitting there and, and dwelling in the frustration and what could have been, I decided it doesn't matter. Like there's, there's no difference to me as far as training. In the moment, my new training, the new thing I need to pour all of my effort into is rehabbing this injury. So. If, if I dwell in the moment and, and get myself worked up about the frustration and you know where I should be, where I could be, there's, there's nothing at all productive about that. And that's something that I don't think people will be able to accomplish when the moment happens. If, if you have that instance of injury or, or you know whatever happens, these things are practiced through repetitions of training and, and practicing a good positive mindset through all aspects of your training. So what we, what we experience on a you know, day-to-day basis would be the things like we have an amazing block, then we have a really bad block, or we have a really, really good training session followed by a terrible training session. Or you know it could happen over a number of weeks or whatever. We have we have bad training for a long time, or we have you know whatever whatever fluctuations we have in training. It's so so common and and you know a huge error. One of the the main issues that lifters have is looking at their training on such a small level. If you look at your training on an individual day, you know a month or you know any, any sort of small timeline. Then, then you're you're missing out on some some really really good opportunities to improve. So, when when I had this happen, I've had so much experience riding the ups and downs and basically finding myself back where I wanted to be. There there was no there was no thought in my mind that this was going to be a major setback. So you know there was there was disappointment in the moment that the the thing that I had right in front of me being raw national six weeks out was something that, okay, that's not gonna be what my expectations were. 
but it didn't change at all what my expectations were moving forward. So um, a- another big part of this is all of the all of the new you know literature on on pain science and the way that our minds handle these things. So if if you are anybody dealing with with some sort of acute injury in particular, I mean obviously there there's going to be some some detriment to the actual abilities of the tissue, but I think it's it's really important for people to stay up to date, especially in this area. And you know, I still I still have conversations with lifters talking about uh, you know certain aches and pains that they have, and like they're afraid you know they're going to hurt it worse. Um, and a lot of those things are like you know they have you know a, an achy back or you know whatever and uh, tendonitis, like those kind of things are, are common. And, and I think starting with an understanding that pain can be a very transient process and a very transient feeling, and that it doesn't necessarily need to be pain specifically. Uh, turned into more of a of a of a problem than it is, and and treated with uh, more more gravity than it deserves. So in my case, pain for sure was a symptom of a muscle that has limited capabilities. And it, you know, in the moment that, that for sure that first weekend when I was I was limping around outside and you know walking a hundred yards in thirty minutes and you know really struggling to move. The pain in that case would have been something that I, I think would really deter people from taking the right steps to improve. Uh, so starting with an understanding that like what I'm feeling right now is well beyond uh, what's the, the pain I'm feeling isn't necessarily a sign that this tissue is just totally you know annihilated and that I, I should be doing some movement. So that's a that's a very very important place I think that people need to start. But even you know the the overarching thing here is that the the mindset of training the mindset that you need to take when you are going into every single session whether you're totally healthy whether you're having the best training of your life whether you're having really bad training needs to be a bigger picture and you need to be able to focus on what's in front of you and make the best decisions that you can on a daily basis and not let the the ups and downs turn into anything more than than what they are so you know i i I feel extremely lucky that I'm able to move past this injury as quickly as I as I am apparently, um, you know, and so far no setbacks and the and and I'm feeling very very strong and positive and yes I'm still planning on doing raw nationals I I don't know what my total will be I don't have expectations there we're we're taking it day by day so uh, you know looking forward to all of the plans that I have are are still very much on for for next year and that I don't feel in any way that this is going to take away from from my my future as a lifter and I think that's something that that everybody needs to hear and everybody needs to experience and and hopefully not through a torn adductor but being able to overcome some some negativity and find yourself right back in a very positive situation so uh hopefully hopefully I got that all out in a way that actually is uh cohesive and 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 makes sense for everybody but if you like the video give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time